Live from your local election headquarters at the 22 News Broadcast Center, this is a Northampton mayoral debate. And now, here's Rich Tedemer. Good afternoon and welcome to a special Your Election Headquarters presentation this week and next week. 22 News is hosting a series of debates and forums for candidates running for mayor in local cities. And today, 22 News is hosting a debate between candidates running for mayor of Northampton. And joining us in studio now are City Councilor Gina Louise Shara and Transportation Consultant Mark Warner. We're going to begin with opening statements, and the order of opening statements was determined by a drawing. And Mark Warner, you give the first opening statement. You have one minute. Okay, thanks, Rich. Northampton is a $120 million a year city operation. It's got 26 departments, 1,000 employees. We're talking about paving roads, fixing the pipes, expanding the tax base, making sure we can fund essential services, pay for retiree health care, maintain the highest possible standards in our schools, and ensure a thriving downtown. This is a role that needs somebody who, has, who is prepared to go and handle the city effectively, who has the right professional skills. These types of professional skills are what I have been working on for the last 29 years as the head of my company, Warner Transportation Consulting Incorporated. I've helped large public agencies to set the right priorities and to make sure they can run their programs efficiently, to work with stakeholders, to do collective bargaining. These are the tasks that I've done. In addition to this business experience, I also have the right civic engagement, civic, uh, civic, civic activities. I've served on four city committees. I've been a, a delegate to the state convention for the Democrats three times. I, ran a mod I moderated a program in Northampton, and I'm prepared to do this for the city as a whole, too. So thank you. Gina Louise Sherry, your opening statement, please. Thank you. Thank you, Channel 22, and thank you, Rich, for hosting this important debate. My name is Gina Louise Shara. I'm a mom of two kids in the Northampton Public Schools. I work full time for the nonprofit Pathlights, supporting people with disabilities. I'm the president of the Northampton City Council. I chair the Finance Committee, and I'm running for mayor. I believe that Northampton should be a place where anyone can make a life for themselves and comfortably retire. And I'm prepared to work with everyone in our community to make that vision a reality. I hope that as you learn about me, you'll see that I have the deep experience serving the city, being involved in our community, and the management expertise from many sectors throughout my career. I have a proven track record showing that I work hard, I listen to all voices, I bring people together, and I get things done. This is a pivotal time for Northampton and many, with many big projects underway. And we need someone ready to lead. I care deeply about our community. I've put in the work, I've gained the needed experience, and I'm ready to shoulder the significant responsibilities of the job. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. We now move on to the question and answer portion of our debate. I'll ask a question, and then each candidate will have one minute to respond. The order of questions was determined by a drawing, and by virtue of that, Mark Warner will answer the first question. Mark, Northampton is in the process of establishing a new Department of Community Care, which would send specifically trained personnel to respond to certain calls, such as ones involving mental health or substance abuse. This is an alternative to having a police respond. The issue of how much funding the department should receive and how much should be taken from the police budget has been a matter of controversy. What level of funding do you believe is appropriate for the department and where should the money come from? The city will be establishing that in the coming year. The department was just being set up now. There, well, the city has hired somebody to help develop what will the tasks of that department be and come up with a proposal for adequate funding. This is not something that should come just from the police, however. And it's not something also that will be just for responses to mental health or substance abuse issues. And they won't be going out on their own in many of these cases. They'll be going out with a police officer. I think the city, this is an important role. I think their role will also be an outreach to help to provide these services for people who are particularly down and out and who need these additional uh, social service type programs and steer them into those programs and make sure that they're using those effectively. But I'm not sure what the funding will be. It will be, may, remain to see how much money um, what are the exact tasks that they have, what the staffing levels will be. But it won't just be from the police budget. I think the decision last year to cut the police budget and the suggestion that that money be used for Department of Community Cares was a mistake and not grounded in reality or data. Thank you, Mark. Now, Gina Louise, once again, we're talking about the new Department of Community Care. What level of funding do you believe is appropriate for the department, and where should that money come from? Well, I'm very proud to have co-created the mission for the Northampton Policing Review Commission um, and, and help appoint many of the members of it. And this was their main recommendation is to create this Department of Community Care um, to provide an option for people for an unarmed response to crisis calls. 
Um, and I actually am currently helping um, on the screening committee for the um, for the implementation director. And so I hope that if you choose me as mayor, I will work with that implementation director in the next um, between January until uh, the end of the fiscal year to work with that director and work with the other departments to figure out exactly what that budget needs to look like. There are a lot of steps that need to be taken and a lot of um, elements that need to be considered to figure out the right budget for that. But I, um, I have vowed that I will fully fund that department for operations for FY fiscal year 23. Um, and if there's more money needed during the rest of this year um, for creating this department, I will go to the city council for that budget transfer. Here comes question number two, and Jeannie, you get the answer first. Also on the issue of public safety, the Northampton Police Department was the site of large protests last year. How would you characterize the current relationship between police and Northampton residents, particularly residents of color? And as mayor, what would you do to improve police community relations? Hmm. Well, you know, this has been a very, very trying time, and we've had some necessary but tough community conversations. And I would say that um, the, the conversations that I've had both with residents as well as with um, members of our police department show that there, you know, I think that there have been some feelings and that people um, are trying to figure out how to bridge that gap, but that there actually is a great desire to come together as a community. And I've heard only positive things from the police officers that I've spoken to about the Department of Community Care and their belief in having this additional arm of public safety. So. I, as mayor, I would like to, you know, be a strong advocate for all of our public safety departments and work together with everybody and make sure that we can all have um, a, a response that we're comfortable with and that everyone feels safe um, calling if they need help in a crisis. Mark, the question to you. How would you characterize the current relationship between police and Northampton residents, particularly residents of color, and as mayor, what would you do to improve police community relations? I don't think the police have a particularly bad relationship with anyone in the city, except perhaps the city council that cut their budget last year uh, very rashly over the course of a city council meeting. And that was done in response to very loud voices, most of which were from outside Northampton. And I think the city has suffered because of that. Uh, the many people who did speak uh, since then have been uh, members of the community and they said they felt intimidated by the city council for not really hearing their voices and this includes many black residents and other people of color without in the city. I think there is a need for good city services and making sure that you have essential services which includes police. So I think that there will be some benefits to Department of Community Cares but there will also be some benefits to all residents when we have the department going back to its full funding as the city council finally did when it conceded that it made a mistake last year and fully funded it for 2022. Okay, question number three now. We've been talking about this a lot in the news. There's a lot of discussion in Northampton about the redesign of Main Street. The city has decided on an option that includes dedicated bike lanes and a reduction in the number of vehicle travel lanes, but there are still discussions going on about the project, some wanting to see more pedestrian and cyclist space and others worried about the loss of parking downtown. It's never easy to park as we know. As mayor, what would you like to see as a reimagined Main Street and how do you balance the, the conflicting views of different business owners and residents? Look, this is a critical issue. The downtown vitality is central to our quality of life, to our employment, to our, our, our retail sales and to the city's property tax and, uh, and hotels and meals tax as well. So we want to make sure that we don't do anything that undermines the vibrancy, the vitality, the prosperity of our downtown. And the downtown Main Street redesign is a possible threat here. I do think that the idea of having additional access points for bicycles is appropriate. I think that the question about removing parking spaces may be a problem. I think cutting the travel lanes uh, from to one lane in each direction with a center turn lane could be a problem, but the city has promised, it said so in the original PowerPoint presentation for this, that it would do a comprehensive transportation analysis. It has yet to do that, and I would hope that before anything goes further, that the city does before any brick is turned, and while they're still in the design stage, the city does meet that obligation and understand what will be the transportation impacts of any of these changes. Gina Louise, a question to you once again. As mayor, what would you like to see in a reimagined Main Street? And how do you balance the conflicting views of different business owners and residents? Well, it's, it's critically important to support our businesses and work towards a downtown redesign that makes the best choices 
one for the present and also for the future. We're the stewards of this, um, this city only for a certain amount of time, and we need to think to the future as well. I want to prioritize public space for people. Retail, how we do retail has changed dramatically, as has how we use public space um, and how we get around and want to be around downtown. I want to maximize the amount of people that are on our sidewalks. We know how critical it is for um, there to be good foot traffic for our businesses. So. You know, I, I want to make sure that we bring back our economic development director to help us with our businesses and help figure out what they need. But in terms of the downtown redesign, I want to make sure that we are prioritizing the space for people and that we um, make sure that we prioritize parking for those that really need it. Not everyone needs to park directly in front of where they need to go. Some of us can walk a little bit, but some people really do need that. And I want to make sure that we're being mindful of those people who have mobility issues and that we prioritize that parking for them. That's a topic that we'll always be discussing, I think. Uh, here's another one. Here's the next question. Home prices and rents in Northampton tend to be higher than many other communities in Western Massachusetts. While the mayor cannot control real estate costs, what would you do as mayor to improve access to affordable housing in the city? Yes, this is a key issue. It's a key issue nationwide, but certainly in Northampton. We've actually done better as a community than many of our uh, surrounding communities in terms of creating affordable housing, but it doesn't even begin to touch the need that we have. We need more housing at every level, and we need to push harder to create opportunities for affordable housing. Cities aren't necessarily developers, but we do create opportunities to create more housing. Um, we need more SROs. I'm actually really proud that this is something the city is currently work, working on. And at the, at the council this Thursday, there is um, a proposal coming forward to create more single room occupancy housing for our folks. Um, I'm also really proud of the work that the city has done around zoning and to get rid of some of our old exclusionary zoning. I think we need to look further at that and figure out how we can create more possibilities for people to use the land that they have for housing um, and to create housing again at every different level and all, every different economic level. And um, we have to make sure that we're protecting those most vulnerable to losing their housing. And I've done work on the city council around that. Thank you, Gina. And then Mark, question to you as well. While mayor cannot control real estate costs, what would you do as mayor to improve access to affordable housing in the city? There are a couple things. One, of course, is through the zoning code. And the city did go and try to go and reduce some of its measures that were making it more difficult to go and expand the housing stock in Northampton recently over the past few years. But they could have done more towards affordable housing as well. The measure to go and allow for some infill zoning and a second unit on an existing lot was something that didn't limit what the size of that house could be. As a consequence, some of those new houses that came on the market were market rate and, and luxury homes. They weren't doing anything for people who were looking to buy in the middle, and they certainly weren't doing anything for affordable. A simple thing we could have done would be to put a constraint on what the second house size could be, maybe three quarters of the ones that there now. We can remove any of the measures that limit the use of, of, uh, of exclusionary zoning in terms of just above, uh, of just re of having mixed use developments. And so there are opportunities here through that. They're making sure that we don't impose any sort of building codes that constrain the developer from being able to put in what he or she wants. So this is an opportunity here that I would like to see going forward. Okay, candidates, we've reached the halfway point in today's debate. We're going to take a short break right now, and then we'll be back with more questions for the candidates running for mayor of Northampton. You're watching a special Your Election Headquarters presentation right here on 22 News.
Welcome back, and if you're just joining us today, 22 News is hosting a debate between the candidates running for mayor of Northampton, and we're joined in studio by Gina Louise Shera and Mark Warner. And we're going to continue questions for the candidates, and Mark Warner, you get the next question to answer first. Home prices and rents in Northampton. Oh, that's, a, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the last question. Let me get back to this. Homelessness is a problem in Northampton and many other cities. Northampton is currently working to create a community resilience hub to help provide resources and services. As mayor, what would you do to improve assistance to city residents who are experiencing homelessness? Well, Northampton is a compassionate city, and this is one of the areas where we can show our compassion. And we've done that, not just through the new Resiliency Center, but also the Department of Community Cares, to make sure that people who are down and out and living on our streets or suffering from mental illness or addiction or for whatever reason are there, can find the services that they need, can be directed to those, and we can, have the, we can provide affordable housing where possible uh, and meet those needs. These are a positive thing we can do. On the other hand, I really want to emphasize that we need to balance the needs of the, the panhandlers and the homeless on the streets of Northampton against the needs of the business owners and people who want to shop and come downtown for other reasons. We, right now, I don't feel that we're making that right balance. So I'm not talking about a criminalizing homelessness or poverty, but just enforcing the rules we have against vagrancy, against aggressive panhandling, or not against vagrancy, but against trespassing, larceny, robbery, smoking pot in public. These are things that we may just ultimately have to go and use the tools we have. Gina Louise Scherer, I'll give you the question as well. As mayor, what would you do to provide assistance to city residents who are experiencing homelessness? So we are in the midst of a nationwide crisis of houselessness, and it's certainly being felt in Northampton, and it's been made worse, of course, by the pandemic. Um, you know, the city and our remarkable organizations have been working together to find both short-term solutions and long-term solutions, and I want to be a part of those solutions as well. You know, I, I regularly attend the Western Mass COVID-19 Task Force for Housing First meetings. This is a remarkable group of regional people who work on this issue and are so committed to it. Um, the key really is housing first and making sure that people are in a personal place where they are able to be successful in that housing and make it work for them. Um, I'm very committed to securing a location for the Resilience Hub. Um, there's been a lot of conversations about locations. Um, it's uh, very important that that is downtown and people are able to access, this e access it easily. I think that that will be a very important space for our houseless community in terms of being a climate safe space for them to be. Um, and you know, I'm, I just hope that I get to work with all of everyone, the lead agencies and the other organizations that are working on this to create that space um, and help people move from that our streets, but um, also move into housing prior, as a priority. Okay, Gina Louise, you get the next question first. Climate change is an issue that affects all of us, and Northampton has set a goal of becoming a net carbon neutral city by 2050, with all city operations and buildings becoming carbon neutral by 2030. As mayor, what would you like to do to make sure that the city meets these goals? Absolutely. I think it's incredibly important that we not only meet but exceed our goals, the, the 2030 and 2050 goals, um, both for our own survival and for protecting those of our residents who are most um, vulnerable to the climate emergency that we're already in. I am very proud to have been endorsed by the Environmental League of Massachusetts, um, and I'm glad that they recognize both my record on the council, but um, also my commitment to prioritizing and viewing our climate crisis um, as, as a lens for everything that, um, every decision that we make in terms of our policies um, and other decision making. I will pursue all federal and state grants and programs to help let, get our community, our residents, um, as well as of course our municipal buildings to that place where we're carbon neutral. And actually I would like us to move beyond just carbon neutral to renewable, but I want us to be very careful about what we're con considering renewable. I don't consider biomass to be renewable. And we need to be careful about um, solar. We don't want to be sacrificing trees um, for solar. So I, I think this is one of the most important issues, of course, facing the world, but certainly facing Time. the city. Uh, Mark, the question to you about becoming a net carbon neutral city by 2050 with all city operations and buildings becoming carbon neutral by 2030. As mayor, what would you like to do to make sure that the city meets these goals? 
there are two parts to that, Rich. One of them is working with, is having the city go and transform its buildings and its vehicles to be uh, greenhouse gas, uh, to, to not be greenhouse gas uh, producers. And the other part of it is looking to go and make sure that the residents can also go and take advantage of programs that can help to transform their lifestyle and their homes uh, towards uh, in more environmentally uh, conscious and responsible ways. And this is something where I think the city will serve as an example. We will go and meet those goals. This is not something which is really up for any discretion here. We have to move. We will take the measures that are necessary. We will go and seek out any grants. Many of them will come from private foundations, but this is also a management tool. We will have to go and you need to go and make sure that you have the programs in place that meet the different eligibility criteria, the different funding levels. There are many strings attached in each of those and different programs will benefit from each of those. At the same time, I think this is where we harness Northampton's great progressive spirit. We put up a giant billboard on the side of City Hall or some other city building. This is where we are in 2021. This is where we need to be in 2030. We put up a challenge, come on Amherst, are we, are you, come on, Northampton, are we going to let Amherst get ahead of us? No, we can do this. We can make the changes. And for those households that have the means to go and make the changes, I'm going to be the biggest booster to go and see that they go and do those. Mark, you get the next question first. Coca-Cola plans to close their bottling plant in Northampton in 2023. That plant employs more than 300 people and is the city's largest single taxpayer. What should the city do to try to offset this loss and provide help to people who may end up out of a job? Well, I think the first thing we can do is try and make sure that we can find another bottling plant or somebody that can take advantage of that facility on Industrial Drive to take over the spot when it goes there. This is an economic development issue, and I think, frankly, this is something we should be aware of in regard to all of our businesses in Northampton. What is the tipping point that might make them choose to give up on Northampton? You know, as soon as that story broke in the Daily Hampshire Gazette, I contacted the mayor's office to find out if there was something going else on, if there was a small thing that we could do as a city to make Northampton more attractive. I'm not talking about a tax break for them, but something we could do that would be, that would be fair to other ratepayers in the city, but would also help Coca-Cola decide that, you know, maybe we can stay here or maybe find somebody else to go and fill in that spot. Economic development has got to be a key thing. We should go and recognize where there are programs for, un for unemployment benefits and training for those people who were lost in case, who will lose their jobs just in case there isn't an opportunity in that plant going forward. But I hope there certainly will be, and the mayor's office will do everything it can to ensure that that does happen. Gina Louise, we have the question to you as well. Coca-Cola leaving their bottling plant in Northampton by 2023. What should the city do to try to offset this loss and should help to people and, and provide help to people who may be out of a job? Yeah, there's no question that the loss of Coca-Cola is a massive hit. And, um, and of course, the, the biggest concern are, are all those folks who are losing their jobs. Um, I really hope that Coke's going to do well by them. And, um, you know, they're not a union shop, but I really hope that they will treat those workers well and give them a decent severance. And I will do everything in my power to make sure that that happens. It's crucial that we bring someone else in there that's going to use that plant, use that infrastructure. The city invested in that infrastructure. Um, we need to make sure that that is still being used, and so hopefully we can get another bottling company in there. Um, and we can't lose that that water revenue. So that's I will aggressively pursue all options and and um, have whatever meetings are necessary. I want to make sure that we have a good solid um, company that comes in there and that will treat their workers well. And um, it's you know it's just really unfortunate that we are a victim of Coca-Cola's larger corporate restructuring, and it's just too bad that they are choosing to leave Northampton after we've invested in them. Okay, candidates, this time is flying by, right? Uh, we're out of time for questions, but we do have times for closing statements for each candidate has one minute to give a closing statement. And by virtue of the drawing, Gina Louis Sheriff will get the first closing statement. One minute. Thank you. Thank you again, Rich and Channel 22 for hosting this debate and for helping the voters of Northampton make an informed decision about the future of their city. The biggest issue facing Northampton is how to make our city more affordable, accessible, sustainable, and equitable. That requires progressive action on a number of fronts, many of which we talked about today, including climate, housing, public safety, education, supporting our businesses, reimagining downtown, and creating a municipal broadband network. So we can move that process forward on broadband, and I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to talk about it. I urge everyone to please vote yes on question one on November 2nd. As Finance Committee Chair, I know how to manage the budget, preserve our AAA bond rating, and stretch our tax dollars. I'm proud to have been endorsed by the recently retired Finance Director for Northampton based on her years working with me. 
I know that moving Northampton forward is hardly a one-person job. I know you can't make good decisions without putting in the work to listen to all voices. I encourage you to learn more about me and my vision and read and watch testimonials from supporters at my website, glshara.com. I'm ready to work for you. I'm ready to work with you. And I ask for your vote for mayor on November 2nd. Thank you. Mark, one of your closing statement, please. Okay. We should expect our city officials to be thoughtful, to be professional, to have integrity, to have a credible resume for someone in charge of $120 million operation, to have good sense and to be swayed by reasoned voices and powerful arguments rather than by loud voices and powerful players. Last year, when the city council went and cut the police budget at course of a, over the course of a single city meeting, they did so in response to loud voices without being thoughtful. And this is one of the reasons why I've decided to enter, become one of the candidates for mayor, because you have to go and make sure that you're doing things that fit with the long-term prosperity, health, fairness uh, of a sustainable Northampton. It's not just being progressive in attitude. It's not just being progressive in sound bites. It is also being responsible as a city official. And this is where I ask for your trust. I do have the professional skills. I have the democratic ideals. But I also have the common sense. And this is what I hope to offer as the next mayor of Northampton. Thank you. And that's all the time we have for today's debate. Our thanks to Gina Louise Sheriff and Mark Warner for participating today. If you missed any of this debate, it'll be posted in its entirety on WWLP.com.